Well, it's only been about two weeks, but it's time to upgrade Walter White. So I used a 600 watt power supply originally for the build-ups because that was the only thing I had on hand, and that was from Deep Cool. Still a good power supply, but I, I want more for this. This is my daily driver. I want to have just a ton of room to expand, which is what I plan on doing. I'll explain that more towards the end of the video. But what I've done is replaced that 600 watt power supply, which was fully modular, by the way, with this 1000 watt DQ 1000 Quanta from Deep Cool. This is an 80 plus gold rated power supply. From, this is pretty much the top of the line from Deep Cool, uh, and you can find the link to this power supply in this video's description. This is a, an absolute beast. When you start approaching 1000 watts, power supplies typically get very long, and that's because, well, most of the components inside that are converting and producing that much power get very hot. So crunching them all very close together isn't ideal, unless you have something like a, a very fast-moving fan to keep things very cool, which is unideal, especially for a very expensive unit. But in the case of the DQ1000, Deep Cool has managed to cram everything into roughly a 100 140 millimeter form factor, so it's a single fan up top or down low, which depending on which way you orient the power supply, and that's pretty much it. That is the size of the unit in terms of length and width, and then the height of course is a standard PSU unit for ATX power supplies. But all in all, this is an absurd amount of power for what Walter White is currently demanding with a single GTX 1070 and an overclocked i7 6700K, but because I have, well, big plans for the computer, uh, I'm going to need something that's uh, that gives me a lot more lead way, a lot more room to expand, and on top of that is going to be very quiet under heavy load. The other thing I want to walk you through in this video is the RAM swap. So I used to have Geo Super Lucid DDR4 with those bright white LED dims that were originally in Walter White. They are now in the new rig that I just assembled with Destin, but uh, I've taken those dims in there and put them in here. Now you're probably saying, well, Greg, those were red before. Why are they white now? Well, it's because I painted them. That's what I want to show you right now. Now with the 1000 watt power supply already tucked inside the next thing to do is replace the two dims in here with the four dims from the other PC in the living room now you're probably wondering well Greg these have white LED accents and the other RAM back in the living room has red accents so that's not really gonna match with anything you got in your rig that's because I'm gonna paint uh, those in there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's very simple. Uh, there's literally just little screws that you have to undo on each side of each dim uh, and then we'll be able to pull the little top panel off of each of these on those dims and then paint those white. And the new RAM will also be at 3200 megahertz instead of 3000 like these Geel Super Loose dims are. Uh, so we'll have slightly faster RAM but albeit at a slightly higher cast latency as well so really not trading off much there. So the way each of these memory modules is designed there's just three simple pieces. Uh, the top part here that's painted red and then you have a front panel and a back panel that both hold that top panel in place. Uh, and there's just four screws up top and those four screws hold this red plate in place. Now the red plate is what we're going to be painting white. So for all four of these dims we'll have white, uh, I guess, bars up top that you'll see in Walter White once it's installed. I'm not sure if I'm going to paint the sides here. I know that's a red lettering and that doesn't really match anything in the rig, but you're not going to see that for the most part because it will be sitting sideways like that. So I think I'm just going to stick with painting only this top bar here. So a word on the paint choice here. I've used Plasti Dip in the past. I have several cans just kind of left over sitting up here. Um, and, and that's a good choice primarily because you can remove it fairly easily. Uh, but I've since gone with engine enamel because it does provide a cleaner finish. It's much more uh, smooth and glossy. If you go with Plasti Dip, I recommend something like a glossifier that will, uh, I guess, smooth out that, that final finish that you have. It'll look more reflective than it will matte. I have since switched to engine enamel just because it does provide an all around better finish in my opinion. Uh, if you're a fan of matte finishes, then go for the Plasti Dip. And if you wanna, I guess, correct that, you can buy the glossifier too. I've used both. They, they kind of look the same in the end, as long as you apply enough coats, but engine nails we're gonna go with now. I'm not worried about removing this anytime soon. Yeah, it's raining outside. Terrible, terrible day to be painting just because of how much humidity is in the air right now. And we live in Louisiana, so it's pretty much never gonna be good in the summer, uh, but whatever, we're gonna paint it anyway. You see people who ever lived in here before painted all over just the straight concrete. It's pretty sad, uh, but we'll be a little more responsible. We're gonna paint on top of this AI crystal box. Okay, so we've got the four screws removed, and you see how simple this is here. Uh, this just, whoops, this just slides right out, just like that. So this is the piece we're going to be painting all white, and you'll mainly see the top of it right here. Uh, now, if I really wanted, I could literally just take this apart 
and paint each uh, side of each of these modules, but I don't think that I want to paint over this chrome strip here. It, it's glued on pretty hard, so I, I don't want to try to pull it off and, and rip anything. Uh, and on top of that, it's just going to look a little goofy, the whole dim just completely white. So it's nice to have some black accents in there, and for the most part you won't see this just because it's so low uh, on the module to be really close to everything else on the board. Alright, first thing you're going to want to do is shake the can a lot. Okay, terribly hard to see out here, but that is the, uh, this is the finished product. And, oh, they're a little stuck. Yeah. Aww. Oh. Yeah, that's what happens when you let paint dry upside down. Well, from the top, they don't look bad. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, so we have the power supply, 1000 watts from Deepcool, and we have 3200 megahertz DDR4, 16 gigs of it from A-Pacer. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for now. That, um, that's all I'm gonna do for Walter White. I do have one more piece to the puzzle that's not here yet. When it is here, I'll, I'll do a whole separate video on that. And the result of including that one piece, in terms of benchmarks, I think you know what it's gonna be. That's right, a second graphics card, a second GTX 1070. We're gonna see if it's really worth, especially on a Z170 platform, upgrading to two 1070s versus just one. What kind of benefits you should expect to see if you decide to SLI two brand new Pascal GPUs. Other than that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything in my life. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more interesting content. Part four of the CPU core series and a brand new ITX PC build you'll probably see sometime tomorrow. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.